difference in this contest as we welcome you to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson, the Auburn Tigers out of the SEC and the Texas Longhorns from the Big 12. Along with Kayla Bro, the three-time All-American at Alabama, I'm Mike Cousins. We just saw Texas. They wrapped up their first game of the day about 35 minutes ago, and it leaves them with room for improvement coming into this game. The Longhorns fell by seven against Florida State. Texas is now five and two against an Auburn team that is undefeated and hungry. Yeah, this Texas team needs to find a way to score more runs offensively. I'm looking at the top of the lineup to get some more production. Somebody like a Janae Jefferson to really get the fire started because this Auburn offense is going to bring it based upon what they've done already this season. Firepower is there. So let's take a look at our impact players brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater. Yeah, I'm looking at Michaela Packer, the leadoff hitter for Auburn. She's dynamic. She's so fast, plays a really strong center field. And on the other side of things, really the only bright spot in the earlier game for Texas was Mary Iacopo had a big one-run home run. And she's just a pure power hitter that can make big swings happen for Texas and turn the tide for them as they hope to rebound after the loss today. She helped them stave off a run rule defeat in five innings against Florida State. What more do the Longhorns have in store? We're just moments away from the first pitch in a top 25 showdown in Clearwater. Back at it for some more fun in the sun from the Eddie Seymour Complex in Clearwater, Florida, Auburn and Texas. The Tigers who last year were about three runs a game come in about seven a game here into this game. A battle against the Longhorns who were defeated by seven runs earlier this afternoon. And this is a lineup right now that can swing it. They've already put together eight home runs uh, for the starting lineup that you see here in front of you coming into this game. Yeah, they're young too. I think that's what's most impressive is they had a big focus on improving their power numbers. This young youthful team has really taken a hold of that and they are executing here earlier in the season. Now the only of the regular hurlers that we did not see in the first Texas game of the day as we saw O'Leary, Check, and Hewlin is Haley Dolcini, last year's Mountain West Pitcher of the Year at Fresno State, new to the Longhorns. Yeah, really looking forward to getting to see her start in the circle today. She's a big time strikeout pitcher. Huge pickup for Texas. It's what they needed to bolster their pitching staff. And she's going to throw up in the zone. She's got a really, really nice rise ball. She's a true strikeout pitcher. She's got really true, clean rotation, a very pure pitcher. And we heard from Coach White earlier this week. He said she's one of the most cerebral pitchers that he's ever worked with. So the Longhorns dropped their first game of the day. Auburn, on the other hand, they came out swinging. They took down Wisconsin 9-3 in what was a 10-30 Eastern time first pitch. Right out of the gates, four runs in the first against the Badgers. That would have, was all they would need through seven innings as Wisconsin only played in three. So see if they carry that same hot streak here into their second game of the day. Yeah, I think what's impressing me most about this Auburn team is that how much they've turned it around from last season. They were basically non-existent offensively in the SEC bottom in pretty much every offensive category, low power numbers, low average numbers. They only had one hitter above 300, and you're looking at her. It was Michaela Packer last year, and that is completely different early in this season. They've put an emphasis on their offense, and so far, it's proven to be successful. That being said, they're going to face the biggest challenge that they faced all season long in Haley Dolcini here today. She's got really good movement, like we said. She's got decent velocity, good rise ball. These Auburn hitters are going to make sure that they have to see the ball down in the zone, belt high, keep their barrel up to be able to handle that pitch. Some big swings right out of the gate from Packer. She takes one and two. You highlighted how she hit last year, just three points above 300. 
Member of the SEC All-Freshman team, and she turns on that pitch from Dolcini, cranks it down the line, and that is gone. A leadoff home run for Michaela Packer. Picking up where they left off this morning against Wisconsin. one nothing. Auburn in the first. Wow. Coming out facing a top 10 opponent, you make a statement from swing number one. Up in the zone, Michaela Packer does a good job, not only rotating to this pitch up in the upper inside corner, really good back hit motion, but she stays so level with her barrel. She doesn't stay under it. She meets it square, gets natural backspin on that rise ball, and drives it deep into left field. Auburn will be a team trying to defy expectations this year. Picked 11th in the SEC preseason poll coming into this season, bolstered by their youth. And Sydney Cox is another one of the players who's young and promising over at third base out of North Carolina. Member of the 2021 All-Freshman team as well. And Auburn says that it's got the youngest roster in the SEC with 16 sophomores and freshmen combined. That's like 70% of their roster. Yeah, despite the fact that they're young, they're getting tons of experience and they're not playing like they're young right now. A lot of confidence in their swings. And they have nothing to lose. When you are picked to finish at the bottom, you're out to prove everybody wrong. You don't have any pressure on you. You just can go out there and compete and have fun. And like I said, Prove the people that doubted you wrong. They were picked ahead of Mississippi State and South Carolina in the SEC, with Alabama picked to finish first. 3 1, zips upstairs on Dolcini, so a home run and a walk to the first two batters. Having third for the Tigers, the shortstop, number 13, Nelia Peralta. Now Nelia Peralta. Peralta, one of the top recruits in this year's freshman class, the high school class of 2021. Switched around her commitments a couple times before she ended up landing with the Tigers and head coach Mickey Dean. Hard roller, and it skips by Scott at third. The first three Tigers have reached. Cox to second and Peralta safely at first. A little bit of a hot shot over to Mia Scott at third base and she's got to do a better job of getting in front of this ball, not letting it get by. It's a tough play, but it's one that you got to make, especially to help out your pitcher right now. After giving up the home run and giving up a walk, she's struggling a little bit. You need your defense to pick up an easy out for you. It's a single for Peralta that brings up Bree Ellis. <laughs> Texas would love to see a long outing here from Dulcini as long as she could go after in their first game against Florida State. The longest that anybody was in the game was Estelle Check, who came on in relief and she went two and two thirds. Yeah, they ran into a tough opponent in Florida State. I mean, their offense looked really good in the earlier game today and they dominated and had to plan for every single pitcher and executed.
two and two. You look at Auburn's schedule to start the year. They started with the Tiger Invitational at home. You see a lot of box scores with the parenthetical five innings at the end of it because of how well they played. Four run rule victories as they played Seton Hall, St. John's, and UMass Lowell. They played yesterday as well. Beat Texas Tech seven to one, tacked that onto their nine three victory over Wisconsin earlier today. So they keep it going. 2-2 is a hard rip back off the fence here. Yeah, and for, as much as we're talking about their offense and how well they're doing and the success they've had early in this season, their opponents are only continue to get tougher and tougher, and this is a, an excellent test early in the season just to see really where they are against another Power Five. That is high and deep and long gone. The Auburn Tigers are not messing around in Clearwater, Florida. Ellis with a three-run homer, four-nothing Tigers. Man, let me tell you, they're looking pretty good against this Power 5 opponent. This is an extremely tough pitch that Bree Ellis just hit, especially when Haley Dolcini was going rise, 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 get something low, almost mid-shin, and just golfs this thing out of the park. Gets her barrel on plane, nice and low through the zone. Gets a ton of power, a ton of pop. That's her second home run in this tournament. And, and there's no outs. I think the Longhorns are a little shell-shocked right now. And with good reason. That was Ellis' fourth home run of the season. She's now driven in 11 runs. And this is just their first inning of their eighth game of the year. <laughs> I, I mean, I just want to like remind you, last year, their offensive number, they hit 242 as a team. They only scored 157 runs on the entire year. They already have over 60 runs this season. That's another elevated ball, Lizenby into very shallow center field. Dayton tracks it for the first out. Five batters in to the top of the first against Dolcini. Yeah, I mean, and to continue this mind-blowing numbers game, they had 22 home runs last year. They already have 15 this season. <laughs> and we're barely, barely getting started. Lindsey Garcia looking to be the next in the offensive parade. Played some third base last year. Started at DP as well in right field here this afternoon. We're certainly seeing a trend continue from yesterday with high scoring affairs here in Florida. It's the one two pitch. Dolcini's got the strikeout and two down after four straight and four straight scored. UCLA and Northwestern. Phenomenal matchup. Pac 12, Big 10, UCLA doing what they do, building their advantage. Top five team to start, and they are in extras. Yeah, UCLA has such powerful hitters. You saw Leah Jordan there. The long ball to take the lead. And credit to Northwestern for hanging with UCLA. Northwestern is a top 25 opponent, so 
definitely not an easy game for UCLA, but to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a top five team is impressive. Bottom of the eighth in that game right now with Northwestern having runners at first and third with just one out. Trying to take one from UCLA. There's so many good games. I mean, you just want to keep your eye on everything. We need multiple screens. Laptop, TV, tablet, everything. <laughs> It is that kind of it is that kind of weekend, really. Yesterday was like manageable with six games. Thirteen though, you got to go <laughs> multiple screens. You know, it's interesting. I, I was going to say this has been such a hitting tournament, and then we went right to the UCLA no Northwestern highlight, which was a pitcher's duel for so long. So you know, <laughs> but for the most part. The bats have come alive, and I feel like early in this season, the hitting's been a little bit ahead of the pitching so far. 3-2. Parker's got it. She got it in left there, but she did watch a couple that went over the fence. Homers for Packer and Ellis. Yeah, Auburn wasting no time showing off the big time power bats. They are here to play. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson, is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida, and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. The Longhorns might feel like this game started yesterday with how long that top of the first inning was. Four runs, two homers by Auburn, and seven batters came to the plate, so the wait was long. But if they can put some runs on the board in response, it will have been worth it for Janae Jefferson and the Longhorns as they come to the plate for the first time here in the bottom of the first. Starts with a strike from Maddie Penta. Yeah, this Longhorn offense is going to have to start getting something going early in this ball game because I have a feeling that this Auburn team has no intention of stopping the run production and. and when you're riding a heater like they are, you just keep feeling it, and you have to find a way if you're an opponent is to slow it down and steal some of that momentum back. And that starts with somebody like a Janae Jefferson at the top of the lineup right here, finding any way she can to get on base and set the table. Jefferson had an unusual offer in their first game of the day against Katherine Sandercock of Florida State. She was held hitless in three trips to the plate where she flied out once and grounded out twice for the unanimous selection of the preseason all Big 12 team. Yeah, and they faced for the majority of the Florida State game, Texas faced Catherine Sandercock, who is high velocity pitcher, but more of a drop ball pitcher. Today they're going to face in game two, Maddie Penta for Auburn and She's bringing the velocity as well. She's going to throw high 60s, low 70s, similar speed to Sandercock. Jefferson dropping it down, trying to utilize her speed to her advantage. Celebration from Lizenby on the pounce and the dart to first. Yeah, that was almost an incredibly filthy bunt right there from Jefferson, just too close to the catcher though. She tries to leg it out. I think that's a really stinking close call. It's about as close as it gets. And the call goes in favor of Auburn. You wouldn't have been surprised though by a safe call there either though, right? No, I wouldn't have, yeah. I, you know, so many times that those plays are close, the umpires are generally right. And the good news is moving forward is that we're going to get instant replay in our game. Scott pokes it over to the left side of the infield. Lish Hammerschmidt, the first base umpire, calls out again. So two up and two down for Penta.
So you were saying, Kayla, about instant replay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With some bang bang plays As there. We get first two piece. bang bang plays. Yeah. You can see that the Longhorn offense is trying something a little bit different. Yeah, this one from Janae Jefferson, so close. And I'd be curious how close the Mia Scott one is as well. So the call is reversed. Steve Gould, Robbie Guest, Chris Neighbors, along with Liz Hammerschmidt, the umpire and crew for this game. And so that does place Scott aboard at first base with one out to bring up Courtney Day. Yeah, a little frustration out of Mickey Dean right here because he's not happy with the call, obviously, but umpires got together and it sounds like her foot wasn't on the bag for that play. So in the language of when you do get to replay, there are only two outcomes that can come out of that too. A call can be upheld or a call can be changed. And this is something that we'll certainly see more when they go to replay review. But as we get to look at it on replay, you at home do, the umpires obviously don't, but what they will eventually look for is indisputable video evidence. So it's got to be 100% that the call should either be upheld or be changed. Yeah, and I think that's something that everybody's really looking forward to because no matter what side you're on, umpires, coaches, players, fans, whatever it is, you just want the calls to be correct. And that's how it should be. And it won't be every call that they can review. There's definitely certain circumstances where they won't be able to change a call because it would affect the outcome of a play, which they couldn't predict. So. There's going to be uh, some learning curves for fans to watch, but it's going to make our game better. And I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, it's about getting the call right and keeping the pace of play moving along as well without unnecessary yep. delays, which nobody wants. Everybody wants the call to be right and have it done in a timely fashion. Four nothing Auburn with a big top of the first inning. Day had a hit earlier against Florida State as she went one for three. And the count two and two with the speedy Scott aboard at first. Swing and a miss. The throw does not make it anywhere near its intended target of second base there from Lizenby. And it looks like there's a question of whether Day was impeding the throwing path for Lizenby there. Yeah, we have more, more chaos. <laughs> a lot of things happening in this inning already. So it's a strikeout, a great pitch by Penta, but as Day crosses the plate, she impedes the ability for the throw, trying to get the runner out at second base. And it looks like after discussion, they're gonna call the back Courtney Day and the runner out for stealing. This is an interference as Auburn seems to be heading into the dugouts. They're gonna take that call and get ready to come to the plate ASAP. Don't let any chance for anything different to happen than their preferred outcome. It's a preferred first for the Tigers, up 4-zip. Upset alert! UCLA, Northwestern, extra innings. And Northwestern came to play. They were down 4-2, going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Maeve Nelson, an accomplished singer. She can sing it and she can swing it with a walk-off three-run home run. The Wildcats, sit, like, six to four, victors over UCLA. You gotta love that. The celebration at home, fire me up, let's go. This is why you come to this tournament, is for games like that, moments, big time plays, big time hits. That's what it's all about right there, giving the fans a real treat too. Huge, they were a postseason team last year. They went to the Lexington Regional, but did not make it out of that regional, as they went to 
the NCAA tournament after playing what Big Ten teams did last year, just a conference-only schedule. Now getting to test their medal early on, that's quite a way to do it. And they get to go into the evening before they turn around and have another challenging opponent tomorrow morning, 11 Eastern, against the Clemson Tigers. There is just no rest in this tournament. <laughs> no. And there's no rest facing this Auburn lineup either as they homered twice in the first inning off of Dolcini. And Denver Bryant is the batter here with already a couple home runs to her name. She homered in the first game they had today. You know, it's so interesting because, you know, you hear about coaches and making changes in the preseason and trying new things out and seeing if it'll pay off. But for Mickey Dean, their offseason plan has been working splendidly so far. They took a month off from softball. They dedicated themselves to the weight room, getting stronger. They really wanted to improve their power numbers, and they started putting balls on the tee at home plate and seeing who could hit the ball out of the park off the tee, and the balls just getting, kept getting hit farther and farther and farther, and now he's got so many of his players that can hit, he says, the eagle on top of the scoreboard or hit it way over the fence now from the tee. And you can just see the growth in their swings and in their strength. And here it is, now in season, and it's working. Second walk allowed by Dolcini. That brings up Carly McCondishi. Mickey Dean. They won. 41 and 39 games in his first two years. The last two games take into account a shortened 2020 season. They've won only 43 games combined. Former head coach James Madison, Radford as well, avid motorcyclist. Some cross country trips under his belt. So, Kayla, I need your 100% candid, honest answer here, that if you went through as a player what you just described the Auburn players did, stepping back and kind of retooling the approach, do you think that you would have welcomed that, been frustrated by that, somewhere in between? Well, I think the good news is, is you have so many young players and the majority of their starters from last year are gone whether it's through graduation or transfer. So you kind of have this young, fresh team. So I'm sure for them it wasn't a big deal. Um, but if I was like a junior or senior and things were working really well for me personally or we were doing well for a team, then I would be frustrated, absolutely. I would be like, why, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if I was struggling, if our team wasn't offensively doing what we needed to do, I would try anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're not winning hey let's switch up practice let's try this new drill new strategy sure why not we got nothing to lose and i think that's the key i mentioned it earlier this team has nothing to lose they are not picked to win anything bottom of the sec didn't make it out of regionals last season all they have is what's in front of them and keep working day to day to prove everybody wrong they got there for a seventh straight year, but they were eliminated in the Tallahassee Regional. They went 0-2, bumped by UCF and then Kennesaw State, their two losses. It's a little hot and cold, right? Their yeah. ERA last year was just a shade over two, fourth best in the conference, but as a team, they hit just 241. That was last in the league by 20 points. Packer scoops an 0-2 pitch. And out from short, Washington was calling for it. And the ball drops to the ground. Should have been an easy out. And instead, it puts Packer aboard for the second time. Yeah, this is a big time error for Texas. A lot of frustration defensively all around here because this is Without a doubt, a communication problem. Somebody needs to call this, take ownership. You got two players that are fighting over it. And in my opinion, I think Washington's pretty much camping underneath it. She needs to call that louder, communicate louder, whatever it is. But in a worst case scenario, center fielder has 
the right to call her off. So if you do hear the center fielder at that point, you got to let her take it. And those are mistakes that at this point just can't happen. And those are things that you learn when you're young, like <laughs> middle school, high school. So it goes down seeing? as an error charge to Washington in that situation. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing some different players moved around. We didn't see Washington at the shortstop position last game. It was Parker last last game. It was Mackenzie shortstop. Parker getting the start yep. at short. Yep. Yeah. So moving things around defensively, trying some new people in some different spots. Coach White trying to make something happen, and so far not working out for Texas. Joe, they say it's an E8 rather than E6, so charge the error to Dayton in the center field rather than Washington at short. Cox retired, two out, third strikeout for Dolcini. Trying to make it a scoreless frame. The offense we saw from Auburn in the first inning, the walk-off home run from the Northwestern game, that has surged adrenaline into me that I cannot shake right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. Auburn averaging about seven runs thus far. They can make it that with one swing of the bat. Peralta challenges Dayton as she creeps to her left in center field, and the inning is over. Scoreless frame for Dulcini and the Longhorns. We are playing softball here in Clearwater. The amount of great matchups that we have here are unparalleled. Coming on to make the diving catch. Wow, just really big plays. Back to the track. The best ticket, the hardest ticket to get in town. And yet you have a front row seat to the Invitational here in Clearwater. It's our schedule update brought to you by Wilson. Games on ESPN Networks tomorrow. Ooh, UCLA and Auburn just got a little bit more interesting after Northwestern's walk-off win against the Bruins. Notre Dame and LSU, Michigan, Florida State, and Texas will see both. UCLA and UCF. So get your really remote good. ready. Yeah, get your remote ready. Absolutely, get it ready because it's a really good slate of games. Well, it's a bit I mean, of an unusual first inning, Kayla, yeah. for the Longhorns as they sent three batters to the plate, got one aboard, had two close plays at first, one out call was changed at first that allowed Mia Scott to reach. Courtney Day struck out swinging, and then it ended up being a double play by virtue of an interference on her crossing the path of Audrey Lizenby, the catcher. So three outs there and three batters, certainly unconventionally. Mary Iacopo started a catcher in game one for the Longhorns, starts at first here in this game. Yeah, it was a little bit of chaos in the bottom half of the first inning. And Texas was trying to make some stuff happen. A little a couple of drag bunts from the two first hitters, Jefferson and Smith, or excuse me, Scott. Also trying to get a stolen base and it just didn't work out for them. The aggressiveness, the attempts to try and do something a little bit different, mixing it up, didn't work out for them. And we didn't really get to mention it, but talking a little bit about Maddie Penta in the circle for Auburn. She is a true right-handed power pitcher. She's got that curve rise combo. She's gonna throw it hard. She's gonna pound the zone. But what she's done extremely well today that she's been working really hard in the off season on is her change up. That thing has been spotted perfectly today. It's been her most effective pitch in my opinion so far. And that's a long way. She really didn't have much of it at all last season. So she's definitely likely, especially here in this tournament, this early in the season, to catch some people off guard. 
Yeah, and we knew she had all the talent in the world. She was a high recruit. Um, her and Shelby Blow were a nice one-two punch. But one of the keys that she's been working on is, you know, she's always gotten in the way with being a thrower. I'm going to throw it hard. I'm just going to be blow it by people and not have to work too hard on spin and location. And in the college game, that doesn't really work. So she's transitioned between becoming a, a thrower to a pitcher. And, and she has that true fastball. She can throw it to all quadrants of the strike zone. But again, her development and growth comes in understanding spin, location, accuracy, and really the, tresh, the chess match between batter and pitcher. Mackenzie Parker, 0-1 with Iacopo aboard at first. Auburn leading Texas 4-0 here in the second. Now our friend Amanda Scarborough, the pitching guru, will tell you, you don't need to be tall to be a successful collegiate pitcher. Yet Penta is, she's 6'2". What's, what are the advantages that come with that height? Uh, use of her legs, first and foremost. She's got those long, lean legs. She's gonna get tremendous amount of power off of the, off of the pitching rubber. And when you have those long legs and you're able to push that stride fat foot out like further out in front of you, you're going to be that much closer to the batter when you release the ball. And even that little distance, maybe it's six, eight inches, whatever it is, can be the difference between a mile an hour. And that's that much quicker that a batter has to make a decision whether or not to swing at a pitch. So there's definitely some advantages to being tall, but that doesn't mean being short precludes you from being a dominant pitcher just you get different skill sets that you get to use and utilize. 2-2 two, two, chases Ooh. McCondishy all the way to the wall. Not a great read on it. Ayakopo, big turn at third. She just gets back in under the tag from Cox. Longhorns putting together some early offense here. Yeah, McCondishy out in left field does a poor job reading this ball. There's so much slice on this pitch. Right off the bat, you can tell that ball is going to tail towards the line, and she misses it by a good 10 feet. You can see she opens up to her glove side, tries to recover to her right. But that's, again, more reps, more reads off the barrel are going to make you quicker in the outfield to judge those types of balls. Because that's something else is when you get to this level, there's more spin on a, bat, a pitcher's pitch, which means more slice sometimes on a swing especially from a lefty. If they hit it oppo, there's like a 90% chance it's gonna have slice towards the line. You can just hope that that doesn't translate for those who also play golf. <laughs> Not a promising way to take the links. Nah, sliced a few balls in my day on the golf course. <laughs> and who can't relate to that, right? <laughs> Here's an 0-2 to Whitaker. McCondishy for a look to bleach your ball. 0-2 with nobody out and two aboard. Texas trying to avoid going 0-2 on the day. And this is one of those moments that Coach White would love to see something big happen out of Jordan Whitaker. You know, last season she was used primarily as a pinch hitter. She'd come in, but had quite a few home runs for limited opportunities. Swings a big bat, got, has quick hands, but hasn't had much success today in game one. Gets a redemption with runners in scoring position here. Penta but, sends it by her for her second strikeout. Yep. Maddie Penta beats her. Velocity was the problem. Jordan Whitaker was late on the previous couple pitches. This is one of those times where the velocity is just too much for her to handle. Up in the zone, a little bit of spin. Under and late. We saw Katie Seema's late in the first game. And now here she gets to start behind the plate in game number two of the day for the Longhorns with Iacopo shifting over to first base. 
That's off Lizenby's glove. Opportunity at the plate, and the tag was too high. Penta was there and couldn't get the glove down. Ayacopo gets the Longhorns on the board, four to one. Really good effort by Lizenby to try and go get this ball. And they had her, they had Ayacopo at the plate. The toss definitely beat the throw, but the tag is that can't happen. <laughs> Maddie Penta, go tag her feet. Do not try and tag on the upper body. That's an out. <laughs> Could have been the second out of the inning. Instead, it's the first run for the Longhorns. That's lifted to left. They'll have another opportunity at the plate. It's two for Texas as Parker scores on the sacrifice fly by Seamus. And uh, the little things in that game matter. If Maddie Penta puts the correct tag on that play at home, the inning's over, but instead it's a run. But credit Seema is to get the run across by just a nice little sack fly, a little fly ball to the outfield. This is the job done to try and chip away at the lead that Auburn has. Well, we mentioned Penta being 6-2, there are advantages with your release to the plate. The disadvantage is, as someone speaking who's 6-4, it, you have to bend over to get to the ground. It's a farther distance to go down. <laughs> it's great at the grocery store when you want something off the top shelf, but when you gotta make a tag at the plate, it's a longer trip down to the dirt. Behind 2-0 to the shortstop, Alyssa Washington. Now 3-0. Washington last year on the Big 12 All-Freshman team. The starter at shortstop at the beginning of the year. Eventually, that ended up with Mackenzie Parker, and they're both in the lineup here in this game with Parker, who's come across to score, starting in left. Penta gets another strikeout, but could have limited the damage in the last of the second. Longhorns are on the board. It's 4-2, to two, Auburn. The Auburn Tigers making a statement in the first inning and against the Texas newcomer, Haley Dolcini. Michaela Parker, solo home run. Just three batters later, Bree Ellis with a three-run home run. The first four batters to the plate all scored. The next three were retired, but that damage has given them the lead. 4-2 Auburn, which has been a high-scoring outfit so far this year en route to a 7-0 start. Mickey Dean, their head coach. Texas responding with two in the bottom of the second inning, but it's the Tigers back to the plate now as we go to the third. Dolcini starts off with the ball inside against Bree Ellis. You can see by her numbers, Brie Ellis has just been on a tear. Four home runs already. The freshman wasting no time in her college debut to make some loud swings. There's another good looking swing. It ends up in the glove of Parker in foul territory as Ellis is retired to start the third. Catcher, Aubrey Lissenby. I think that's something Energy that we've MVP. seen. Sorry, go ahead, Kayla. Nope, go. <laughs> I was, Energy I MVP right now goes out to Aubrey Lizenby. If you've been watching this game, when Maddie Penta is in the circle, every pitch, Lizenby gets back up. She is juiced about whatever happened. If it was a good pitch, yeah, do that again. If it wasn't a good pitch, all right, the next one's going to be a good one. She has been ready to go. 
I'm glad you mentioned that because I noticed that right away. She's an active catcher, a lot of emotion. She's working so hard, not only to you know do her job behind the plate, but to give and feed energy to her pitcher to make sure she knows that she's got confidence in her pitcher, that she's going to do whatever she can to work. She was blocking well, staying active behind the plate. And you'll love to see that. And that style doesn't work for everybody, but some pitchers love that, and some pitchers need that constant reassurance. And then other people don't need it, and they want a quiet catcher that's still and compact, and it's almost like you don't notice them during the game. Statuesque, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> but she's even active right now, walking around before she gets back in the box. She goes down looking. She'll be ready when she gets back behind the plate. If you had a litter of puppies, they would look boring compared to watching her behind the plate. The amount of energy she has is just incalculable. So Dulcini now, after that rocky start, has rebounded to retire the last four batters. An error mixed in there. And aiming for a first one, two, three inning with Lindsey Garcia standing in the way. Struck her out in the first. Yeah, and Dulcine hasn't been pinpoint on her accuracy on all of her pitches, but the last couple at bats, I feel like she's hit the low pitch pretty well on either side of the plate. She froze up. Lizenby on the last strikeout on the inside corner. Trying to work a little screwball on that low plane. But we haven't really seen her off, we haven't seen an off speed be effective today. And Auburn has done pretty well so far, either laying off the rise ball that's way out of the zone or fouling it off. And that's about all you can do with that pitch. Right back to the circle. Hard off of Dolcini, the throw to first from Scott is late. And you just hope that Dolcini is okay after that came and got her what appeared to be in the shoulder. Yeah, it's always a scary moment when the ball comes back at the pitcher like that. This is his player, this is Lane. I think the good news is it might have tipped her glove first. But like I said, just the reaction so close for these pitchers in the circle. It's a tough job right, right there, being that close. I'm impressed. Normally you get at least a courtesy visit from the athletic trainer. Mm -mm. Don't need I it. I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. I was like, that's always a moment where you just go out and see how your pitcher's doing. Nope, she's good. Keep going. I think or the good news is it was an off-speed pitch, so it was a little a bit maybe softer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But look, you're not volunteering to get in there off-speed pitch fastball <laughs> and no, potentially take that not. contact. I was an outfielder, Mike, so I was pretty far away from <laughs> that contact. Still comes at you fast, though. <laughs> One of the most scare, scared moments I've ever had in my life was playing slow pitch softball, and I got stuck at first base. And this guy comes up who must have been like 275 pounds. Like the bat looked like a twig in his hands. And he's a left-handed batter. So he anything that he hits that is a pole, it is zipping my way. And I never have wanted to be a worm and get under the ground faster than that moment in my life. So another one back to Dolcini. This one is no problem. All things considered, she takes care of business. And Auburn goes quietly in the top of the third. Softball on the shore.
Welcome back. It's the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. The diversity of ages in the crowd here has been one of the coolest things to watch from those getting perhaps their first taste of softball to those who have been watching for decades. And as we've heard, people from all around the country coming to watch this. And it's not just softball too, it's style as well. You know, a lot of people that I'm seeing, I think need to invest in a, a little bit of sunscreen. <laughs> you don't have to go like SPF 75 to start. 15 will get you a little bit of the way. Those overcast days will get you too. Mike Cousins along with Kayla Bro, the national champion at Alabama. 4-2 Auburn with Texas batting. They're on the last of the third as the Longhorns have the deficit in the second inning, putting two on the board. I don't know about you, though. I'm, I jump in at SPF 100. I'm not messing around. <laughs> I'm not going to wear a hat, sunglasses, like long sleeves. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to mess around either. Yeah, I've devolved to the point where some might be embarrassed to be seen with me, but I'm going full bucket hat on the beach. <laughs> Speaking of bucket hats, we even talked Coach Dean wearing the hat. But that's not like your regular, like that's that hat has swag to it. Yeah. That is a sharply selected artisan chosen hat. Well, he said, actually, well, you know, we talk with all the coaches coming into the tournament. He's like, look, I'm not kidding. I got to protect my ears from the sun. <laughs> That's a real thing. <laughs> and the sun is certainly providing some shifting angles here. As you see the lengthening of shadows just after 5 o'clock Eastern time in Florida. With Bella Dayton, a 3-2 pitch fouled back as she leads off for Texas. You know, as an adjustment for Texas, I feel like, despite the fact that they're down two runs, they've had some more quality at bats than they had earlier today against Florida State. A little bit better battles, working the counts, more solid contact. Just haven't had anything really fall. They lost their first game of the day, 9-2 against Florida State, and it was an early hole to dig out of. Mary Iacopo, a solo home run in that game. And the 3-2, the ninth pitch of the at-bat, as close as you can get without it being a strike, and it's ball four and a good battle between Penta and Dayton. A really good battle back and forth. You can see this pitch. It's going to be a screwball in the outside corner. Now, I'm a batter, so I think that's a ball. But I know a lot of pitchers in the world that would want that call for a strike. Penta would have liked the strike to put one out and nobody on with Jefferson coming up, presenting myriad offensive possibilities for Texas here. And it starts with Dayton taking second base. A great athlete preceding her time in college. Basketball player and also ran 400 meters, 200 meters in track. Jefferson pushed that bunt a little bit as Penta picks it and retires the leadoff hitter. So Jefferson surprisingly today, two games 0 for 5. She does get Dayton over to third. 
She's doing her job still. I, I mean, unfortunately for her, the bunt was just a little bit too hard. And in her situation, it it's going to go down in the book as a sack bunt. But she's has the wheels and the back control to make that a hit more often than just a sacrifice. So she's probably a little disappointed heading back to the dugout. She'd rather have a situation with first and third rather than a runner on third and one out. I should say, in the devotion to accuracy department, not 0 for 5 for Jefferson. As you said, a sacrifice making her 0 for 4. Now she still did a job in the book. I mean, we're going by the rule books. <laughs> it's going to be put in the scorecard, scorebook. That's a that's scorebook. a note for the for the one percent. Ninety nine percent of people probably don't care, but <laughs> if you do keep a scorebook, there you go. Scott goes chasing upstairs. When Penta is locked in, the velocity has been hard to match. Yeah, there's been a couple pitchers that she's thrown today that have some heat on it, a little extra sauce coming in through the strike zone and blowing it by batters like Mia Scott. And Mia Scott, who just got her first start against McNeese State earlier this week, probably hasn't seen velocity like that thus far in her college career. Yeah, that's really getting thrown into it. Going from first college game, friendly atmosphere at home, to here, top 25 matchup, pulling out of the SEC. And it's two out. Dayton started the inning with a walk. She's at third. And Day at the plate. That's a nice off-speed pitch that Maddie Pence has been able to find this season. It's definitely hard to sit on that pitch when the majority of the time Maddie Pence is throwing upper 60s, low 70s, and then she'll sprinkle that in. Unless you're sitting that pitch specifically, you've got to take the off-speed. Penta ranked as a top five recruit a couple years ago, coming out of high school. SEC all freshman team in 2021. It's nice framing from Liz and B, but doesn't get the call. The count is full. Tying run at the plate. And it's ball four, the second walk of the inning. So Texas trying to sustain a rally. And as the softball team has gotten their season underway, Texas baseball opens up their 2022 season with a three-game series against Rice at home with coverage starting 6.30 Central and then 2.30 for the Saturday game, 1 o'clock on Sunday. The entire series on LHN and the ESPN app. Great season last year. For Texas baseball, 50 and 17, all the way to Omaha, where they got eliminated by the eventual champion, Mississippi State. Mary Iacopo.
Day on to second. Lizenby sticking it in her pocket, ensuring it stays a two-run lead for the Tigers. Copo rips it foul. She's down two strikes. There has not been an inning today where Texas has had the lead. Ayacopo can change that with one swing. And she's proven that hit a home run in game one today against Florida State. She's so strong, and she gets up there and she hacks. I mean, she's not going to get shortchanged at the plate. If she gets barrel on ball, she's going to put a charge in one. Sixteen home runs last year, second most ever in a season for a Longhorn, just two off the all-time single season mark. And a 2-2, pounded into the ground at third, Cox charges, throws, and that retires the side. The Longhorns mount a threat, they strand two, Auburn with the lead onto the fourth. Back in Clearwater, it's Auburn and Texas. And Longhorns head coach Mike White joining us for a moment. We saw you uh, in game number one against Florida State here in game number two. What do you feel like has been the biggest difference between those two games today? <laughs> well, I don't know, about five runs so far. But uh, no, we, both times we didn't get off to great starts. And so we were behind the eight ball here. And we got to try and play catch up. But uh, we had a chance that inning, didn't quite get it done. I, I like our fight right now. And this is what we got to do is just kind of give up and just keep going. And Coach, we've seen somebody like Mia Scott, who's kind of worked her way in the lineup after having a great yeah. debut game this week. For a freshman, how is it important for her to get reps early in the season against quality yeah. competition like you guys are facing today? Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, she is uh, lightning fast, and it's fun to watch her play. And uh, getting here the experience in this competition, that's what it's about. That's why we're out here. Mike, thank you. Hey, you bet. Hook him. In his fourth season at Texas, before that, the head coach at Oregon, where he won five Pac-12 titles, numerous trips to the Women's College World Series. I'm Mike Cousins, along with Kayla Bro. We go to the fourth. Auburn, the 4-2 lead, and Denver Bryant ready to lead things off. Dolcini really labored in her first inning, 31 pitches. Since then, things have slowed down. She faced just four batters in the third. And Kayla, as we just talked to Coach White for Texas, I'm led to believe that you guys knew each other way before he was at Texas and before you were in college. Yeah, I had the opportunity to play for Coach White. Um, you know, he was a pitching coach at Oregon when I was growing up, and he took a couple years off uh, from being a collegiate coach, and he helped raise his daughters and coach their teams and took that opportunity. So I played with his daughter, Nairi, and uh, he coached me in summer ball, coached me a little bit in high school, and I was a very spoiled high school kid because I got to <laughs> face Mike White, who's one of the premier men's fast pitch pitchers in the entire world from New Zealand, and he was my BP pitcher. I mean, I got to face one of the best pitchers in the world <laughs> at practice every single day before I even stepped on a college field. Do you think you were getting full effort there? I mean, there was, no, absolutely not. He would throw, he could throw like in the 80s. Are you kidding me? Oh, so um, there would be no, no. shot, right. I, I remember one day he pumped it up to like 70 miles an hour, which was really fast for, you know, a high school kid. And I remember like putting it in play and I was so excited. I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> put the ball in play. And, yeah, sometimes he'd have fun with us and just challenge us and blow a bias. And if you made contact, you were really 
really stoked for the day. But no, he's a he's such an intelligent coach. He knows the game so well, and I think I didn't understand at that time. But having somebody with the knowledge that he did elevate my game was so helpful. Nice grab by Scott over there at third on the laser line drive to retire Bryant for the first out. Call it the hot corner for a reason. Good reaction right there by the freshman. The corner sizzling like a tray of fajitas being brought out to your table. That's to the bottom of the lineup with Makandashi. That's, that's amazing, though, to think, like you said, you don't even necessarily realize the level of instruction you're getting. Like, you sign up for high school softball, and whoever's coaching is coaching, because you want to play, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A diving try comes up short there. And it's just a long strike. Parker on the run. Yeah, I, I think it's so important to have young kids in high school get great instruction. I think we're seeing that more and more. I think more players, former players that have played at a high collegiate level are getting into the coaching game, whether it's in the high school level or a college level. You're just getting better instruction. These kids have so much more access to not only coaches, but videos, information, TV coverage of watching the sport that they play is just so invaluable. And I think that's why you're seeing such a growth of our sport. Well, Monday night, 7 Central. Tune in for game plan with Chris Beard, special analysis from the coach as he looks to the week ahead on LA Gen. And then Tuesday night, same time, same place. Game plan with Vic Schaefer as he breaks down his team and the game's on deck for that squad. Dolcini really cruising right now, has her first one, two, three inning. Can the offense pull even? Four, two, Auburn after three and a half. There is no way that Blackbeard and the Pirates ever moved that fast, unless it was a storm, right? <laughs> that, is that, is the, that is the fastest pirate ship I have ever seen in my life. For no sails, that thing is just carrying the wind. Right? Doing work out on the water, whether you're on the bay or out in the Gulf. It's a good time. It's a good time to be in clear water with day number two. And we still got games to come. Still more on the schedule later on tonight here as these two teams play their final games of the day. But first pitch is at 6 o'clock for UCF and Texas Tech. Oh, my goodness. Go get it. Denver Bryant. That's worth celebrating to be sure. She's like, yeah, I got that. Made that look easy. No problem. Nice quick reaction right there by Bryant. Going to her arm side, getting this up the middle. She's fired up too. She knows that's a huge play for her pitcher in this close game against a top 10 opponent. Fire you up. Yeah, to be able to slow down the Texas offense, which last inning stranded two. Those were the potential tying runs as they have trailed in every inning they've played today after losing 9-2 against Florida State in their first game today. And you go back to the last two innings, Penta in the circle faced three batters in the first, but each of the last two innings, the leadoff runner reached, and that's when Texas either scored two in the second or threatened with runners in the third. So the rest of the day's schedule before Denver Bryant stole the show there. You've got UCF and Texas Tech at 6 o'clock Eastern. All these games on ESPN+. Plus. Tennessee and Clemson at 6 o'clock. And the final game of the day at 7 Eastern, Washington 
and LSU. Penta's up to five strikeouts now, and whether it's been an experienced bat or one of the newer players in Texas's lineup, keeping pace with the fastball has proved an immense challenge. Yeah, the velocity that she's bringing has been really effective today. You know, but at the same time, I look at this Texas team and they should be able to handle the velocity no problem. I think Maddie Penta's got a little bit of bite right on the end of her pitch that's making it challenging for them to catch up to in terms of the movement, not necessarily the speed. That being said, there is a few hitters in the lineup that have been just late period. But I really do think as a hitter, that's something that you can control. And you need to change your timing, adjust maybe your load, be a little bit shorter, choke up on the bat, whatever it, whatever you can do. And that's going to be, we talk about it all the time, a key thing for a hitter. If something's not working, you got to go up and try something a little bit different, go up with a different plan, a little bit different of approach. And I'm going to use... Jordan Whitaker is an example of her second strikeout, and I just nothing changed from at bat to at bat. Saw no physical adjustment at the plate, and, and those are things that are in your control and that you can do, especially in a close ball game. You're only down two runs. Haley Dolcini has done a great job since the first inning, keeping you in this ball game. Auburn opened the door with some errors and mistakes to give you those two runs, so you to do something offensively to help yourself out. Because every time there's a single base runner on, that means the potential tying run is standing at the plate. Yeah, absolutely. Penta threw 55 of her 77 pitches in the second and the third innings. And ahead, 1 2. At third, Cox goes low to get it. Cross Diamond, a 1-2-3 inning. Denver Bryan and Sidney Cox put a star next to their names to cap off the fourth. How about a little Sports Center top 10? So Sports Center top 10 for you. In the hole, on the knees to get the out across the diamond. Sidney Cox, what a star. If you want to be a power player in the Big 12, you better learn how to hit the long ball or at least try and stop it. With Oklahoma at the top of the preseason poll, Kelly Maxwell earlier today had a one hitter, almost another one. And Janae Jefferson still looking for her first hit down here in Clearwater, but her past performance and what she'll be doing this summer with the U.S. national team speaks for itself. The Longhorns with Haley Dolcini in the circle. She had just nine pitches in a one, two, three, fourth. Gave up four in the first inning. How do you handicap Texas coming into this year? You know, wipe out what they've done here so far today, but what your preseason thoughts were for the Longhorns? Yeah, I think they have a, a potential to be a World Series team if they can kind of click on all different levels. I thought their big time incoming transfer of Haley Dolcini adds a huge help to their pitching staff but that being said you know we haven't seen thus far from texas is that really really potent powerful offense that we saw last year and they're definitely missing some pieces they had some graduates somebody like a shannon rhodes who was second in home runs last season's gone so just finding ways to fill gaps like that has been tough for texas and it's going to be a, a transitional period for the next few months but i think they're a team that can get better they have all the tools they have the depth they have some young, talented players. They've just made some basic mistakes this game. Their pitching staff's not as, been as crisp as it can be, but those are all things that you can go back to the drawing board a little bit and work on. You can really grind at practice to, to fix those things. So I think for Texas, there's a lot to look forward to moving forward in the season. I think they're going to have a tough schedule, so they're not really going to have a break. They play a really, really challenging upcoming schedule. And that's what Coach White wanted. He wanted iron sharpens iron. He wanted to make his team better by quality competition, and he's getting that right now. And you hope down the road it pays dividends. And they've played just one home game so far. 
They're going to go home after this event in Florida. Wednesday, they take on North Texas, and then they've got the Texas Classic, also available for you here on LHN next weekend with UTSA, Tulsa, Arizona State coming to town, and Texas State as well. Going back to just Texas and how I think they're going to do this season, I think the biggest challenge that they are going to face, though, is that Oklahoma State, Oklahoma in the Big 12. I mean, those are rivalry games. And unfortunately, those two teams dominated them all last season, so they're going to have to really dig deep to try and beat those two. But hey, I want to go back in time because we saw something awesome out of Ellis today. She hit a bomb ski low pitch on the inside corner but check the bat flip on this mike i mean she loves it <laughs> that is an aggressive flip right there on the no doubter i'm gonna give it eight and a half out of ten i mean i feel like it wasn't like a like an aggressive bat flip i feel like it was like a joyous like yay i did it but it was still there yeah definitely points for doing it because we're here to have fun everybody's having fun so why not celebrate when you do good things? It's my general right. stance on, on bat flips in general. It's a sport. Let's have fun. My 1.5 point deduction is for the fact that there, like you said, there could have been a little bit more nonchalance to it. Like, yeah, obviously I was going to flip my bat and hit a home run. <laughs> she gets that through on the right side, the two out base hit. And I would add, make it go in a direction where you don't even see the landing spot. <laughs> yeah. You are so non-concerned with where the bat is going to land. You know it's going to land in a safe spot. It will make no contact with any other being. But you're so experienced with it. It's, it's there's no question about it. Yeah. You know, I was a, I was, a, I think I was a bat flip hater initially, but now, I mean, we adjust, right? The game changes, people change. I was a little bit of a purist, like, hey, respect the game, respect your opponent, like, beat them on the field, like, not by, like, your taunting or whatever, but you know what? I think it's a fun expression. I think it's a celebratory thing, and, uh, it, you know, it's brought a lot of good attention, a lot of negative attention in some ways, but... Either way, good or bad, it's putting softball in the spotlight. So I'm here for that. Kennedy Cooper, pinch runner at first base for Ellis. And it's the catcher, Lizenby, who's 0 for 2. Her top five against Dolcini. Sends it a long way, but foul. So what do you think was the tipping point for you, going from hater to cultivator? Uh, you know, it, it's interesting because I don't really remember getting bat flipped on ever when I was in college, so I don't think I had an opinion then. Um, I think Oklahoma State's um, Samantha Shaw, the first couple times she did it, I was like, wow, that is so disrespectful. And then, <laughs> you know, it just kind of became like this monster and I kind of loved it. You kind of love to hate it, if that makes sense, in a yeah. great way. And uh, I think she became a star at the World Series and she proved it with her play. I think uh, if she didn't back up her actions, then I would have been disappointed. But she showed out on the field. She became a superstar at the World Series, made a name for herself, basically put the entire Oklahoma State team on her back. Whew. That was a dime right there. Simos with the throw down to second as she erases Auburn here in the fifth. Texas still on the comeback trail. There's something to be said for throwing the first punch and the power that comes along with it. Michaela Parker leading off the game. Solo home run. Three batters later. A moonshot 
from Bree Ellis made it 4 nothing Tigers. Texas has put two on the board, but Maddie Penta, as she has settled in in the circle, the sophomore and an ace for years to come for the Tigers, has struck out five. Texas getting its two in the second inning. Yes, yeah, held Texas only one hit in this ball game, and really the two runs on the board were some costly defensive mistakes from Auburn. So really, Maddie Penta has done extremely well in this game in the circle. She's given her team a great opportunity to go beat a top 10 opponent. But this game's not over yet. She's still got to keep putting in the work. But as she keeps continuing to pitch well and be successful and find her rhythm, it just looks like she's getting stronger and stronger, been a little bit more crisp in the last couple innings. And not to mention, the Auburn defense has played a couple innings really poorly behind Maddie Penta, but then they've made some stellar plays too to help her get out of get out of some innings. So you know it goes back and forth, a little ebb and flow there for you, Mike. And but one of those runs that scored too was a wild pitch where she had a yeah. play on Ayacopo at the plate, didn't get down yeah. low enough for the tag, and so that inning could have gone much differently in the second. Yeah. With those two right. runs that did score. But now she's retired five in a row. <laughs> Ball one to Dayton. Dayton, the gem city in the state of Ohio, and Dayton has been a gem in the transfer portal for the Longhorns. One one popped up, diving try. Lizenby gets the out. Superwoman behind the plate. Another absolute web gem from the Auburn Tigers. Lizenby, those max effort, ball that's spinning away from her. Full on dive. Beautiful job catching and trapping this ball in her glove. And she is fired up, and rightfully so. We've seen her emotional all game. She brings the energy, like you said. And she's backing it up right there with her play. And that, a 1 out of 10 after a 10 out of 10 on a difficulty scale. I want to know what she eats for breakfast. The energy is amazing. Lizenby with a diving grab, and then the third out as well to put it away and hold the Longhorns at bay. Welcome back to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. Auburn fans channeling the energy of their catcher, Aubrey Lizenby, as she laid it all on the line behind the plate. Yeah, and even before that, Sydney Cox over at third base, showing off the leather over at the hot corner. Good plays and good plays all around for Auburn. The dive, the effort, the read, and to see that spin, that's so hard to take off your catcher's mask, go make a quick play. And then she's got to, you know, take off the gear and get up to the plate because it's her time to hit. The gods have spoken. You star on one end, perhaps you spark something on the other. It's a diving try up the middle. The throw is not in time. Lizenby has her first hit of this game to start things off for Auburn in the sixth. Yeah, she's proven the rule right. When you go make a good defensive play and you hit the next inning, you lead off the next inning, 
like almost every single time somebody gets a hit and wasn't necessarily a shot or anything, but it's placed perfectly and she finds herself on first base and is probably happy to be there. For the time that she was anyway, and she gets a reprieve, a chance to take a breather. Freshman from Austin, Texas, Abby Smith on the pinch run. Is it a fair thing to say that when Eugene Lenti speaks, everyone listens? Yeah, he's got so much experience. He's a head coach at DePaul for so long, just tons and tons of knowledge. <laughs> you can tell in that. We talk about how energe energetic Lizzie B is. You can tell she was wanting to talk, talk, talk. <laughs> was like, yeah, all right, settle down, settle down. That's a great assistant to have for Mickey Dean with Coach Lenti, who's the winningest coach in DePaul history, was there from 1980 to 2018 and made four trips to the Women's College World Series. Yeah, and I think you have an incredible former coach, head coach, and then you also have a former Auburn player. And I think that's so important, too, is you have somebody that has been in their shoes in Emily Carasoni over coaching at first base. Someone that knows exactly what it's like to be in their position, and that can garner a lot of respect from a team. One of the best hitters in the history of the program there. You know, when you look at these two teams, you compare, I think, from an athletic standpoint, from a skill standpoint, you know, they're well matched. They both have tons of talent, really high level recruits, Auburn and Texas, but Auburn's swings look more aggressive at the plate. I mean, they're hacking strong. They look like they're on time. And Texas just looks off time, a little bit more hesitant. Haven't gotten very good barrel on ball, and that's something that they're gonna have to go back, probably watch a little bit of, bit of, little bit of film on and help them on their road throughout the season. Longhorns at risk of going 0 for 2 on the day. A flare goes over Jefferson's head. And Auburn puts another on the board. 5-2 Tigers. It started with Lizenby. They went to the bench. Abby Smith gets called on to pinch run. And she's the fifth run of the afternoon. That's a big time insurance run. After a little bit of drought that Auburn's experienced since the first inning, not putting up a run since they put up the four spot. That's a big time run. Simple piece of hitting, scoring from second. And you gotta be happy if you're Mickey Dean to be able to see that and see your offense get out of their lull and face Dulcini after she finally got comfortable and get some production. Yeah, since that four run first inning, they had just four hits over the next four innings. And another pinch runner, Paige Garrity, takes second base in relief of Blaine after her RBI single. She took second on the throw in. And Dulcini takes a seat as well here in the sixth. Pitching change for the Longhorns. Well, after a rough start for Haley Dolcini out of the gates with four runs across in the first inning, two home runs, the next four and a third, a lot more smooth sailing. Unfortunately, Texas still finds itself down by three against Auburn. Yeah, overall, a decent performance. Again, off to a rocky start. Proved why she's as good as she is. Came back a little bit in the later innings and found a rhythm. Pitched some good innings against Auburn, but just ran out of steam a little bit there at the end. And... Texas is looking for a little bit of change of pace from their freshman pitcher coming in, Simpson, to try and keep the score the same so they get an opportunity to get their bats back in the bottom half of this inning and try and push to get this game a little closer. Simpson broke into the lineup Wednesday night against McNeese State. 
She draws a half swing there from Bryant. And Garrity honors the pinch runner. Goes second to third on the play. Yeah, and I thought Loud Simpson pitch. looked really good. I thought Simpson looked really good in her game against McNeese this week. She's got a really nasty changeup, a nice off speed that really is deceiving when it comes in. And there it is right there. She throws it in back-to-back -back pitches. She's got a lot of confidence in it and throws it for a strike often. And the McNeese State hitters clearly had trouble with it. In that game, she went four and a third. So you're talking 13 outs. Nine of them were strikeouts. It's a pretty decent day. And she sends Bryant back to the dugout looking. A little frustration there from Bryant. She thinks that ball is a little bit up and out of the zone, but actually didn't think it was that high of a pitch. Perhaps that's what comes with the level change, right? As she started out. Yeah low in the zone and then when it comes up all of a sudden gets on you in a hurry yeah i think that's the biggest key you, just, you get that freeze freeze the batter when you change the levels like you said when you change the speed it actually has a, a really big effect on your eyes makondashi the left fielder number nine hitter has struck out and grounded out in this one something else that these Auburn hitters are going to have to adjust to is Haley Dolcini had such an effective natural spin rise ball, and you're really not going to see that from Sophia Simpson. So her rise ball is just not going to jump like Haley's did. Once Simpson's through this, promised the top of the lineup. Mia Scott will lead off bottom of the sixth for Texas. That's two second and into right field. Auburn adds another run. And they could have been out of it at five to two. Instead, it's now six to two in favor of the Tigers as it skipped away from Jefferson. Yeah, sometimes when it rains and pours, this is a, a play that Jefferson usually has. I think the biggest key is that she's going to go backwards as the ball approaches her rather than attacking and coming and getting in on the shorter hop. And when you do that, when your weight's back, sometimes the, the hop just kind of eats you alive rather than you going and getting it. I think it's a tough play no matter what just because of the diff difficulty of the bounce. But again, that's a play that she usually makes. Error charge to Jefferson at second base. Packer, number one on the lineup card, is the sixth Tiger of the inning to the plate. She got it all started with a solo home run to lead off the game. That just slipped away from Simpson. McCondishy alert and aware. Swipe second. 
First two runs on the board for Auburn since they scored four in the first. Two two is the strikeout pitch for Simpson. And the inning comes to an end. A pair come across on an RBI single and an error. An uphill climb for Texas. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson, is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida, and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. Whether it's been offense or defense, and we're talking Lizenby, the Tigers have had it all so far today. Huge day for them. The invite has, the Invitational has been quite hospitable to them as we take a look at the VitaCost.com hospitality zone. Everybody comfortable, relaxed, their needs are met. Make sure you have lots of water though as the humidity is high, the temperature in the 70s. It's hard to say, here as we go to the bottom of the sixth and Scott is retired to start the inning. It's still winter. Right? Fooled it's me. the middle of February. Uh, the weather is perfect for high level early season college softball. Texas comes into this five and two, so squaring a or you know lacking a comeback here, they'd be five and three going into their action tomorrow. But one of the beautiful parts of this portion of the schedule as you test yourself is it will make you stronger however you emerge you'll be a better team for having played against this level of competition yeah i think you have to take the opportunities to really learn from maybe some of your failures or some of your mistakes that you've made and, and be able to take ownership in them and then go back to the drawing board go back to practice and continue to work and build and get better and adjust Papelka goes down swinging. Her first at bat as she came on as a defensive replacement earlier, so the sophomore is retired. Two quickly gone in the sixth. That was a fantastic job by Maddie Penta. You got a pinch hitter in, you go one, two, three, easy, pound the strike zone, and then you get on pitch number three for the K is something out of the zone that makes Papelka chase. And that's exactly what you want to do with the pinch hitter. Waste no time. Go right after them. Well, she's now retired nine in a row. And Penta here on the last of the sixth is just four outs away from already. This being game number eight for the Tigers, her third complete game. Yeah, you can just kind of feel the difference in just the overall vibes from either of these teams. Auburn just so excitable during this game. They feel confident. You can tell from their swings, their body language. And on the other hand, I think you can see the frustration on Texas. I think this is a team that expected to have probably a better record at this point. They were upset by FGCU last weekend faced a tough Florida State team today, got beat pretty badly. And then again, you think you have a reprieve in Auburn and right in the first inning, they just get out and punch you in the mouth with four runs on the board. And I think it's an opportunity for them to learn what it's like to face adversity and how can we bounce back? And they're gonna get an opportunity to do that tomorrow. I mean, and there's still time left in this ball game, don't get me wrong. What will also be interesting on the opposite side of that, too, is, okay, great Friday for Auburn. They're hoping to go 2-0. and oh, And then you're going to get a very charged up UCLA team tomorrow at 10 Eastern on ESPNU. It's the number three team in the country was upset on an eighth inning walk-off home run by Northwestern. Yeah, it doesn't get any easier, does it? 
Yeah, UCLA is a team too that, you know, ingrained in their mentality and their program is to battle. And they are so prideful, so they're going to have a tough competition. But Penta's ten in a so row good. retired by Penta. She's cruising like she's out on the water. LHN is your home for game plan. Monday nights at 7 Central with Chris Beard on the men's side, and Tuesday nights, 7 Central, with Vic Schaefer as he gives a breakdown of his team and their upcoming schedule. It's all on LHN and the ESPN app. On the women's side, riding a three-game winning streak into a matchup Sunday at West Virginia on ESPN2 at 11 Central. We've had an exciting game here between Auburn and Texas. Mike Cousins along with Kayla Bro. Tigers up 6-2 as they come to the plate here in the seventh. Four runs in the first, and they added two for insurance in the sixth. Sydney Cox, all freshman team in the SEC last year, takes in the dirt 2 0 from the freshman Simpson in just her second appearance. It sounds a little funny, but six runs for Auburn. If Simpson can hold them scoreless here, then it's the currently tracking to be their lowest run total in their first eight games. Yeah, Auburn has just exploded onto the scene this season offensively. And we mentioned it earlier, but they put in a ton of work to try to improve their offense in the offseason. That's off the shoe of Simpson, picked up, and the throw to first on the rebound gets the job done. Cleat save. That's the second time we've seen a ball come back and hit the pitcher for Texas. First was Haley Dolcini earlier today, and then Simpson just gets it on the heel, and she's fine. She's like, I just passed it to you. A little soccer move to Janae over at second. <laughs> Make sure I get the assist, though. <laughs> that was Simpson to Jefferson at second. And over to Ayacopo to complete the putout. And bring up Nelia Peralta. Jefferson giving it a look along with Whitaker to long strike. Well, the lowest scoring game of the year for Auburn came just yesterday as they topped Texas Tech 7-1. And their first five games, four of them were run rule victories. But this weekend presents a step up in the level of competition, and the Tigers very ready to answer. Yeah, and a game like this against Texas is going to give them so much confidence. I mean, this is a top 10 team, a really quality team that the Longhorns have put together. and for Mickey Dean to take his young, very young team and to come in here in this tournament and start 3-0, they have got to be feeling it right now. A lot of excitement, a lot of confidence. And that's why you play these preseason tur tournaments. Obviously, you're going to have some bumps in the road to learn some learning opportunities, but there's games like this that you can go back and call, recall from your memory when you're playing, you know, Kentucky on the road in March and it's a tough, grueling three-game series, you can say, hey, remember what we did in this game? We need to bring that energy. We need to have that approach at the plate. Simpson keeps it low in the zone. Her third strikeout, eighth overall by Auburn hitters. Uh, 
I think Simpson's going to be a really important key factor in Texas's success this week, this season, because she looks so different than the other pitchers. She's super spinny. She's got a really strong off speed, and it's really deceptive. The off speed, a changeup, they all kind of mix very slightly different speeds, but just enough to fool the batter. And when you have a Haley Dolcini that's majority rise, hard thrower, Shea O'Leary, majority drop, but hard, I think she's going to offset those two pretty well and could be a good middle reliever, closer, depending on the situation when they need her this season. The biggest question there is probably just situationally speaking, what spot does she fit in, like you said? Yeah. As she works with a much more experienced group of pitchers, too. Three and zero to Ellis. Three run home run. First inning accompanied by well, can't say I've seen them all, but bat flip of the tournament so far. So four plate appearances in this game, and she's reached in three of them. It's a, another trend that we're seeing this far in the season, and it, and it happens every year, but just new freshmen, new faces, like Abri Ellis. Olivia Johnson from Washington has made a huge splash early in her career. Jordy Ball from Oklahoma had a lights out pitching performance against UCLA last weekend. Megan Bloodworth from Alabama had three home runs and a grand slam in her opening weekend in Arizona. And an I mean, there's some, yeah, <laughs> that too. You know, Mia Scott has had some really bright moments. It's really cool to see good freshmen stepping up. Love to see new names, get some fresh faces in our game, and some exciting studs and stars to watch over the years to come. And they're probably just as excited, too, coming onto the scene where anybody that gets to this level, you were really good, if not the best, wherever you came from. And then all of a sudden, you find out and say, hey, I can do it, too, here. That's got to be a great feeling, because you were saying earlier, before we came on the air, you had a similar revelation earlier in your career, right? Yeah, I played in a tournament. I remember playing Michigan. I was like, oh, man, we're playing Michigan. This is a big deal. And I had a good day. And I was like, I belong here. I can play at this level. I think that's a pretty powerful feeling that a lot of these players are going to experience. Simpson looking to put away the Tigers here in the seventh. Texas will need at least four in the bottom of the inning. Against Maddie Penta, who has been on a roll. Throwing just 31 pitches the last three innings. Nobody has been quite able to lay off on a ball in the dirt from Simpson. She strikes out her fourth batter, and it's up to the offense to see if the Longhorns can stave off defeat. Tennessee's Kiki Malloy, knowing this game's going on, and Michaela Packer started with a leadoff home run, says, I'll match you. Look at the Volunteers up 1-0. It's not easy to hit the long ball off of Valerie Cago, but she did it. So 1-0 in that game, and in this game in the circle, Maddie Penta has been the star of the show. She's been so dominant. She's working velocity. She's got a rise ball, low ball. She's sprinkled in the off speed, but she's just keeping Texas off balance enough. So they have to sit it sometimes. And it's so filthy, they're swinging and missing. So she's going for her third complete game in the first eight games for the Tigers. As a side note, that's Kiki Malloy's second leadoff home run of the tournament. 
looks out. Only Michaela Pecker so far, so she's got to step her game up. She's got to hit another one. <laughs> Trying toe to toe with Kiki. So you're saying do it tomorrow against UCLA? Yeah. Well, yeah. Why not? Rise to the occasion. Texas has scored a total of four runs in two games today. They'll need to equal that number here in the seventh if they want to extend things. And Mackenzie Parker has her second hit of this game. And just the third by the Longhorns in this contest. Breaks up a string of 10 straight set down by Penta. Tomorrow, 7 Eastern, Texas and UCF from Lonnie Erie Clearwater. Hope you'll we'll be there for that one. Batting for Gilbert, number one, Maya Holmes. So Maya Holmes is the pinch hitter now for Texas. The freshman hoping to spark the offense. And on the base paths as well. After Parker got aboard, Camille Corona pinch running. Lizenby smothers it, the throw to second, and they get the out on Corona. What a day for Lizenby behind the plate. Yeah, first and foremost, Lizenby does a good job of trying to dig this ball out. Keeps it in front and so quickly is able to transfer and get the ball down to second base where Bryant puts on a nice, clean, easy tag to get the first out of the inning. And that's exactly how you pick up your pitcher. She throws a ball in the dirt. She just gave up a base hit. And boom, when you have an opportunity to make a defensive play, you step up and do it. And that's the second time she's made a really awesome play today for the Tigers. And what a way to finish off that at bat and get your team an out away from a win. I mean, this team is fired up. Maddie Penta has shown up really well today goes upstairs with the rise ball brings the velocity way out of the zone no chance for Holmes on that one and they are one out closer from getting a top 10 victory today Penta started off the season with a 16 strikeout performance and a seven inning win. And then in her next three outings, struck out 14. She's got nine in this one through six and two thirds. Tigers looking to go to eight and oh. The date against UCLA tomorrow morning. Texas with a loss would fall to five and three. It's a later schedule tomorrow for the Longhorns. They are a 4 o'clock Eastern first pitch, ESPNU against UCLA, before taking on UCF here on LHN at 6 Central. Over the shoulder, why not finish it off with another web gem? The Auburn Tigers stay perfect, 8-0, and, oh, and a beautiful finish out in shallow left on the ground by Peralta. Well done start to finish. 
What a performance by the Auburn Tigers today. I mean, not only did they get a stellar performance in the circle from Maddie Penta, their offense showed up from pitch number one on with the home run from Michaela Packer, and then their defense made some outstanding web gems that gave them energy, that gave them confidence, enthusiasm, the carry through, 